Hi there guys, uh, this is my first request video. I've recorded a couple of little subreddit creepypastas uh, for the channel Short Scary Stories. There'll be a link to them in the description of this video. And for them I've recorded Long Road and Go Back to Bed. Long Road. Still a couple of hundred miles from home, Johnny could feel his eyes starting to burn from exhaustion. He rolled down the front windows in a fruitless attempt to keep himself awake. This particular road was long and dark, barbed wire fences stretching as far as the eye could see, but no animals in sight. He'd driven through here only a handful of times before, but it had always made him feel uneasy, a slight twinge in his gut. It was too dark, too silent, and far too deserted for his tastes. Still so far from being home, he began to drift off. Such a long road, so tired. When he snapped to, he was shocked to see someone running toward the car. A woman was screaming for help and waving her arms. Johnny slammed on his brakes, swearing under his breath. Please help me! The woman cried, running over to the passenger window. There's something out here! She pointed up the road and Johnny squinted into the darkness, until he realised he saw movement. It was the barbed wire fence, but only a small section bouncing up and down in the limited view of his headlights. There was a twang as the bouncing section shifted, moving closer, then closer again. What the hell? Johnny stared, wide-eyed. Please, you have to get me out of here, the woman begged. There was no one there to move it, but the motions were far too deliberate to be the wind. As each new section began to move, the one behind it froze and the movement was speeding up now. Four seconds of bouncing, then on to the next section. Three seconds now. What is it? Johnny asked. We have to go! The woman begged. One second bounces, and Johnny could taste the terror burning in his throat. Get in! He shouted as the fence bounced not twenty feet from his car. The woman dove into the passenger seat, and Johnny began to take off before the door was even closed. To his horror, there was a shrill, piercing screech coming from that invisible section of fence. Then suddenly the fences on both sides of the road began to bounce all at once. The screeches came again and again, and Johnny swore that he could feel something powerful buffeting against the car. He hit the gas full on, and shot down the road at top speed. After an eternity, they reached the end of the road and turned back into streets with lights and other cars. Thank you, his passenger said quietly. What the hell was that? Johnny asked. Oh, that was my family wishing me luck, she stated. Johnny slowly turned towards her. She was smiling at him, or rather, her mouth was smiling but the rest of her face was missing. We can't leave on our own, but if a traveller takes us along, well... Johnny felt the agony of sharp teeth in his soft flesh. He was dead before he could hit the brakes. Go back to bed. Mary awakes to the sound of dripping water. She doesn't bother her mind with the question of where it's coming from. All she can think of are her newly installed hardwood floors. Mummy, I'm cold! The little girl cries, standing at the foot of Mary's bed. The dripping was still there, driving her crazy. Grab an extra blanket from the closet and go back to bed, sweetie. Mary said to her daughter. She doesn't even try to hide the annoyance from her voice. Of course, the girl doesn't listen to her and makes her way around the bed. As her little feet pitter-patter across the floor, Mary can only hear the sound of the water dripping onto the floor, ruining them. The little girl crawls into the bed and snuggles up next to her mother. 
Mary doesn't open her eyes, but she does put her arm around her daughter reluctantly. She really is cold, Mary thinks to herself. Not for the first time since the birth of her child, she's filled with an overwhelming dread and anger. The doctors told her that the postpartum depression was normal, that it would go away after a little while. Maybe that would be true if her husband hadn't abandoned her. Now, here she was, four years later, and she still couldn't look at her child without feeling grief and sadness. She felt something new now, as she held her little girl, but she couldn't figure out what it was. Was it guilt? Why would she feel guilty? Suddenly, as she gains full consciousness, a memory buried deep resurfaces in her mind. It was a cold night. She remembered the hypothermia setting in as the police officers wrapped a blanket around her soaking body. She remembered the sadness in the officers' eyes when they told her that they found her daughter still in the car seat, strapped in the van. She didn't remember driving into the freezing lake, but she did remember telling her little girl to stay calm and stay in her seat as she climbed out of the sinking van. As all of this comes back to her, she became fully aware of the cold, wet child she was holding in her arms. Sweetie, she whispers with a shaking voice. The apparition begins to turn, her wet hair wrapping itself around Mary's arm. When she is fully facing Mary, she opens her eyes. Their pure white and water is leaking from them, pouring down her face. She opens her mouth and lets out a flood, and then she makes a gurgling noise and whispers, Why did you leave me, Mummy? Mary is frozen with fear. Her body shakes involuntarily from the cold. She is now soaked from head to toe. The girl whispers her question again, but Mary can't open her own mouth to answer. Suddenly, the water stops flowing from the ghost's mouth. She opens her mouth much wider than should be possible and lets out a wailing scream. Why did you leave me, Mummy? Why did you leave me? She repeats the question over and over as water fills Mary's lungs. Her vision begins to blur and she feels water leaking out of her ears, muffling all noise. The last thing Mary hears is a giggle from her daughter. Now Mummy will never leave me.